Um, welcome to the show, Danielle. Look at yeah. this. This is crazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> the only girl. Ellen, that's wild. <laughs> now, your store is called Semicolon Bookstore and Gallery. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Now, it's different than your regular bookstore, correct? What makes Absolutely. it so special? Absolutely. Uh, we are a crazy, crazy space. Um, I'm loud. I am. <laughs> when I walk into a space and I'm really into something, I'm like, oh my God, look at that. And that's how I like to feel in bookstores. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't feel like that. And so I kind of had to <laughs> create that space. So um, your bookstore is perfect for me because I'm loud. Absolutely. We, we have so a So we can talk about like, girl, did that, you read this? Exactly. That's how people walk into my space. Oh, it's <laughs> um, like my whole family. So it's uh, murals uh, by Chicago artists on mm -hmm. the wall. So we have all types of graffiti and everything. It is a vibe. It's always super loud. There's typically a child crying and a dog running around, but that's my space, and that's right. what I wanted, and it feels very welcoming to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's my store, so it should. That know? part. That <laughs> part. Now, what inspired you to open a bookstore? You know, growing up, we were super, super poor, um, and but my mom was really good. She wasn't a reader, but she was really big on explaining the necessity of education to us, and so when she would read us a kid's book, if we were reading something about like pirate ships or something like that, she would make us a fruit salad boat that was a ship. And it would just mm. kind of connect us to the book emotionally. And so as, as I got older, I was like, I love books. I love bookstores so much, but I want one that I like to be in. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm not afraid to roam around. And so my mom did an excellent job of instilling that, instilling that interest. And uh, I just kind of took it from there. Now, pandemic happened shortly after you opened the bookstore, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you had to close it for a while? Yes, we did. Uh, we were just getting going. It was, it was lit. We were having a good time. And uh -huh. the next thing you know, the mayor's like, you got to shut it down. Uh, and so we shut it down. But before we did that, we gave away all of our books um, mm. because it only made sense. We didn't think we were going to come back. We didn't think mm. we were going to be able to reopen. And knowing that, we gave our books to the students who also weren't in school, you mm. know? So what were they reading? Where were they getting any type of education from? Um, and so that's what we ended up doing. And this gave you the idea to start this program called Clear the Shelves. Yes, tell us about it, girl. Let me tell you about Clear the Shelves, honey. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we actually let people clear our shelves. When students come in and they want books. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people can't afford books. A lot of people don't know that books are considered a luxury item. Uh, they, they are? They are considered a luxury item, and families of color are usually the ones that are most negatively affected by the lack of access to books. And so we wanted to interrupt that lack of access and give them what they needed free of charge as much as we could. And so that's what we decided to do. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> now, not only did you just give away books, you didn't just give away books, but <laughs> you also gave money to yes. people who came in and needed <laughs> yes. help? Yes. We gave money, gift cards, food, whatever anybody needed. And so it's problematic. It was a horrible idea in hindsight. But <laughs> we gave it because we had it. So in 2020, we had this quick influx. A lot of people don't know that bookstores make most of our money during the holiday season. And so, you know, January through June, we're just kind of living off of that. Um, but we gave that away because people needed it. And mm -hmm. so we, we found ourselves in a position where we were trying to respond to what the community needed, uh, and we did what we had to do. Well, you know what, girl? You're amazing. And I want to keep talking You're to you. You're not wrong. Th I, I know. <laughs> I know I ain't wrong. So we're going to keep talking. We'll be right back with more Danielle after this. Okay, we're back with the owner of Semicolon Bookstore and Gallery, mm -hmm. Danielle Mullen. Now, Danielle, mm -hmm. now, you do so much to give back. How was your store able to make a profit? Honey, we don't make no money. We, what? <laughs> we have been in the red since our inception three years ago. Um, uh -huh. We went into the black for a little bit in 2020 when things kind of boosted up and we had all that support, but we made a point to give all of that away because, you know, that's what bookstores used to represent, community uh, spaces, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, and so, yeah, we, we don't make <laughs> any trying to money. Do, I think you're actually doing it. Yeah. I personally think you're actually doing it. And I think I need to put some books on your shelf, okay? That's what I'm thinking. And okay. so I, I want to contribute, okay. okay? Since you're giving them away, I'm going to give you something. Give us some books. If you want to give it away, you can give it away. <laughs> here, go, here go a few copies of my book, uh, Tiffany Haddish, The Last Thank Black you. Unicorn. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. That's
That's for adults. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's for the adults. Absolutely. Keep now, there's the... some teenagers who try to pick this one up. And okay, now, teenagers, okay. it yeah. depends on how okay. mature they are. I, I don't mind them, because okay. it might help them in life. So. Yes, absolutely. But it's for grown-ups mostly. <laughs> then, if the kids want something, you can get them this book that I wrote, Layla, The yes. Last Black Unicorn. Yes. Okay? Yes. And then, I wrote another book. Okay. I wrote, I put together this book. Now, this is, um, this is something that's for the ladies. <laughs> And for the men, say like me, you know, oh, it's called Hot Men from History. First of all, <laughs> George is looking good. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's a picture book. Okay. Um, I want you to go ahead and open up the first page and then show everybody uh... what's on the first page. Oh! Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. This season, <laughs> Ellen has partnered with Tis Best. And they want to give you $15,000 for your bookstore, girl. $15,000. Thank you. Thank yes. you. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. So you, thought, <laughs> you thought you was going to see a sexy naked man from history, right? Yeah, I was looking forward to that one. Yeah, no, but I got some pictures for okay, you later. Okay, okay, okay. But <laughs> to experience the true power of giving, visit tisbest.org. I want to thank Cynthia Revo, and I want to thank my friend Ellen for asking me to host again, and I want to thank all of you for watching. Have a great weekend, and bye.